In the name of Jesus, amen. Will you pray with me? Father, have mercy on us. In Jesus' name, amen. You can be blinded by the light. You can be blind because of accident. You can be blind from birth. You can be snow blind. You can go blind. You can be blinded by ambition or anger. It really doesn't matter what type of blindness you have. When you're blind, you can't see. St. Luke drops us this morning right in the middle of the story of two blind groups. One man whose eyes did not work, and he was able to see Jesus clearly. And the disciples whose eyes worked perfectly, and yet could not see the Savior, their Messiah, and their hope. The blind man at Jericho did not have the use of his eyes. St. Luke tells us he was a beggar. He was dependent on everyone for everything. He couldn't see to work, and yet this man saw Jesus more clearly than the disciples did. This beggar could hear something was going on. The crowds around him were were wrestling, and he asked, what's going on? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. The blind man could see with perfect clarity who Jesus was. And he cried out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. This Old Testament greater son of David was passing by him. So he did what anyone with eyes of faith would do. He cried out again, Son of David, have mercy on me. The first request of this blind man, surprisingly, was not to restore his sight. His first request to Jesus was for mercy. The blind man was, in a sense, praying a form of the same prayer that we just prayed at the beginning of the worship service, the Kyrie. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The blind man didn't try to build a case so that Jesus would look at him and heal him. He did not extol all of his greatest virtues. He saw Jesus for what he was, his Messiah, his Savior. His Lord. Walking walking toward him was the Old Testament promise of a Messiah in flesh and blood. He trusted that whatever Jesus would do would be good and the right thing for him. And it was. Jesus had mercy on him. Jesus had mercy on this blind sinner. And then Jesus restored the eyesight of this man that was blind so that he could see his salvation. He could see his Savior. The blind man saw Jesus for who he was. Jesus is God's mercy for us. Jesus is God's mercy for sinners. Remember, mercy is not getting what we deserve. When the blind man cried out for mercy, that's exactly what Jesus gave him. Jesus didn't run through the last few days of this man's life and say, Why do you expect me to be merciful to you? You haven't changed a bit. He didn't condemn the man for his sin. Jesus loved him. Jesus mercied him. He restored his eyesight. The sin of the blind man and all other sinners was mercied by Jesus just a few days later as Jesus would go to his cross, be laid in the grave, and rise again on the third day. Now the disciples, on the other hand, they could see Jesus just fine, at least physically with their own eyes. But they were more blind than the blind man at Jericho. This was the third time that Jesus had told them what God's mercy to them would be like. Jesus said, For he would be delivered over to the Gentiles, and will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day he will rise. Jesus was clear. 
The Old Testament prophets were clear. God's mercy for sinners, God's mercy for us, would demand a blood sacrifice for our sins. God would be merciful. He would not give us what we deserve. Instead, God gave us mercy with flesh and blood. God gave us Jesus. And then he gave Jesus our sins. That's mercy in action for you and for me. When it came to Jesus' mercy to all of us through his death, The disciples were blind. The seeing disciples were blinded by their ambition. Jesus, when you come into your kingdom, which of us will sit at your right and which of us will sit at your left? They were blinded by their pride. Jesus, which of us is the greatest? At least one was blinded by his greed, as as Judas would regularly help himself with the money from the treasury. And then Judas also would sell Jesus out for 30 pieces of silver. You see, being blind isn't just a physical condition. It's a spiritual condition as well. Spiritual blindness is when the cares of the world, when the anxiety cloud the mercy of God. Instead of trusting that he will work all things for our good, We doubt that God is more powerful than the situation that we're currently in. Before we're too hard on the disciples and their blindness, we should maybe take a look at the speck in our own eye or the log in our own eye. How many times have you justified your own sin by comparing it to someone else? Well, at least I'm not as bad as so-and-so. Or how many times have you justified your sin by saying, well, everybody is doing it. It can't be that bad. How many times have you refused to forgive because you're just too angry yet? How many times have you refused to to accept the forgiveness of someone who has hurt you? How many times have the circumstances in your life or your loved ones or the events unfolding around you in the world caused you to be bitter and cynical rather than to cry out, Son of David, have mercy on me. In this last week, our world changed again. Russia invaded Ukraine. Once again, the stability of our world, and especially their world, was shaken. And how quickly we fall into the trap of criticizing and becoming cynical and having all of the answers. We so quickly forget to cry out in mercy to our Savior. Lord, have mercy upon those in the Ukraine. Lord, have mercy upon our military. Lord, have mercy upon our leaders. We can be blinded by fear and anxiety, worrying about all the things and the events of the world and what that means for our family and our friends, and especially our family that's in the military. But instead of being blinded by these things, look to your hope. Look to the promise. Cry out just as the blind men did, Son of David, have mercy upon us. You know as well as I do from God's word that he keeps his promises. He mercies us. He keeps his promises, the ones especially that he wrote through the prophet Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah in the Old Testament lesson. Listen what God wrote. Listen to his mercy. He will strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. He says to the anxious heart, be strong, fear not. Your God will come and save you. Open your blind eyes, dear saints, and look to your Savior in faith. Look at his mercy given to you. Look at the cross and see the Lamb of God that came into the world to take away your sins. Look at him showing mercy to you. Look at his mercy poured out on us this morning as we confessed our sin and Jesus mercied us through his cross and pronounced you forgiven. Look at his mercy preached into your ear to give you hope and promise that God is merciful and has sent our Savior to us. 
Look at his mercy given to you right here in his very body and blood for you, for your strength and forgiveness. Look at God's mercy poured out to you in the gifts that he gives to you so that we might not be pushed aside by fear and anxiety, but that we might rest in his peace. This is the mercy of God given to us. This Jesus on the cross for you, for your forgiveness, for your strength, and for your peace. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now the peace that passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen.